Hi everyone, welcome back to Medimi. So today we have a special episode. We are joined by Joshvi from Medics on the Mic. And today we're going to be um, learning more about some clinical ways high schoolers can get involved in medicine. So we had a first part done with Medics on the Mic about more academic slash research ways students can get involved. So if you're interested in that, please go check it out. We will have it linked somewhere. We'll find a link for it. Um, all right, so how about we all go around and introduce ourselves? Um, I'll just start first. I'm Ritika from Med and Me. I'm Srija from Med and Me. I'm Janvi from Med and Me. And I'm Smira from Med and Me. I'm Joshvi from Medics on the Mic. Nice. So um, <clears throat> we're going to just get started. So first off, we want to talk about hospital volunteering and um, some shadowing as well. So a great way to get involved with medicine is hospital volunteering. So it is kind of difficult as a high schooler because a lot of hospitals don't accept minors. And um, if they do accept minors, you'll probably be in like a gift shop not really like a lot of patient care, but there's still ways to find these opportunities. So the best way is to probably search online for programs. And if you're interested, try calling or emailing. That's probably one of the better ways to get um, like in touch with them. And on top of that, you should probably try shadowing. So shadowing is when you follow around a medical professional for a certain amount of time to learn how their career is. Um, this can be pretty helpful so you can learn where in medicine you want to go or even if medicine interests you like for example like I shadowed like a dentist for like two or three days and like I learned maybe dentistry isn't for me and like that's okay like you can like try different things and see what you like um, so the best way to get shadowing opportunities is um, if you have like anyone you know, like a relative or a friend, or is any type of connections like that, that's probably like the easiest way because they know you. Um, if not, you can just try searching up a clinic and um, giving them a call or a visit. Um, yeah, so now we can, um, oh, before that, like, does anyone have anything they want to add on to that? No? Okay. Um, so now we're going to move on to nursing home volunteering. Okay, so volunteering at a nursing home is, it's a really good way to learn about like a different aspect of healthcare that isn't just, um, it's like clinical hours, but it's not at a hospital or at a clinic. It's at a nursing home. There. So the main jobs that I did when I was working was giving out ice, giving out meals, um, creating activities for the residents. Um, that's all I can think of right now. But you get to learn about different types of nurses because there's many different types of nurses, including RNs, CNAs. Um, there's also physicians and other types of healthcare workers like ancillary aides that all contribute to nursing homes. You can also get a lot of volunteer hours and the time that you can volunteer is pretty flexible. Um, the way that I found out about this nursing home was through my school because they posted an opportunity for it and I applied. It's a pretty easy job and you still get to learn a lot about like a different aspect of healthcare and it's pretty cool. Nice, I have a question for you actually. Um, were there any like LPNs on the job? Any what? LPNs. LP. Um, I think there was two. I'm not like fully acquainted with all of the, um, like people working there yet. But mm -hmm. I there. I think there are definitely a few. Oh, nice. Um. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to tech schools. Yeah, Josh, we has talked about this in the previous episode a little bit about. Um, AOS and IIT, that's the nearby tech schools near us. But um, nearby tech schools basically in general offer career technical education courses that are a great way to learn more about different fields of medicine and attain a wide, wide skill set in the STEM field in general. There are certain advanced technologies and equipment that can help bring more experience to students who want to learn more in 
about certain medical fields and even learn to perform simple procedures that can be used in real life when working or volunteering at hospitals, clinics, and even labs. Searching for schools or even community colleges nearby that offer STEM courses can help you get to the next advanced level, get a specialized education which can help with future write-ups on resumes and even jobs. Nice, and um, to add to that, like, um, me, Spara, and Jodvi have, like, um, gone to, like, a tech school, like, we did, um, a program, um, called, like, the Monroe Advanced Technical Academy, and, um, we got to, like, we did, like, the intro to health and medical science program, and that was really fun, and you get to, like, depending on, like, the program you go to, um, you'll at like the most basic level get some sort of like education on anatomy or like medical topics um but sometimes like you'll gonna you're gonna get like certifications um like through a program we were able to get like four or five um different like medical certifications so yeah that's a really great opportunity to do so um speaking of opportunities we're going to move on to making the most of opportunities Okay, so as Asrija and Ritika mentioned before, opportunities such as volunteering at nursing homes or even shadowing, right, they can come and go. And as you get older, you probably will be eligible for multiple of them. I know when I was looking for things to do over the summer, a lot of programs had the age requirement of being 16. And I didn't turn 16 until like early July. So I know you have to like look around quite a lot. But whichever ones you do accept, make sure to make the most out of it. It's important to stay focused, be proactive, and ask questions if you have any. Um, and additionally, it's equally as important to be open to new ideas and perspectives and to be willing to learn and grow from the experience. You're going to meet a lot of new people that come from very diverse backgrounds and, again, probably aren't the same, don't have the same background as you, and that's a great way to learn more about other people and about the career option that you are looking into as well. Um, you should also take advantage of the opportunities to network and connect with others in the field because, um, again, it may result in future col collaboration and partnership, access to new information and resources, and career development. Um. Yeah, for me, definitely when I like ask questions. So I've done like three different um, like clinical research opportunity or not research, oppor just clinical opportunities. And the first one, I was too scared to like ask any questions. I didn't really learn too much, like just like like their their job. I didn't learn like specific medical like information. But then the next two, I actually started asking questions um, and I definitely learned a lot more and I got more out of my opportunity when I asked questions. Yeah, um, I agree. I think the next thing that we we're going to talk about is cold emailing. Yeah, so um, cold emailing is um, is when you find basically like anywhere. It can't it, it doesn't just have to be clinics. It could be like research mentors, lawyer like offices, CS companies and stuff like that. And you find their emails or phone numbers and you call them or email them asking them for an opportunity. Um, so cold email is going to be hit or miss whether you get a reply or not. So the thing with this is that you're going to get a lot of no responses or rejections before you find the one that will let you intern or shadow because obviously we're so young. They don't want to like, they don't want like, it's kind of like, and we're not even like, it's not even like we can do that much. We can provide them with that much help um, because we're so young and we don't have like our licenses and stuff like that. So a lot of them are just too busy to respond or they're just going to reject you on the spot. Um, and so I've probably emailed at least 50 places. It's probably like way more than that before I found somewhere that said yes. Um, and so the key is just not to get discouraged and just to keep on emailing, keep on calling, because the more people you email and the more people you call, the more likely you're going to get a reply. Um, and so basically what I did is I just emailed clinics or specific types of clinics if I wanted a specific type of doctor on or sorry so what I did is on Google I 
searched up like like maybe one day I wanted to specifically look at like internal medicine I'll search up internal medical clinic near me or and like it, it could literally be any type of physician and then I found like every single doctor or hospital that they listed I just clicked on them I either gave them a call or I found their email and I emailed them um and so I found that emailing was more responsive than calling because when you call, you usually don't get the manager that answers. But when you email, you're speaking directly to the manager. So um, usually, like, for me, I found emailing was better, but I know some people prefer calling. Um, And also with emailing, you can, like, kind of keep emailing and following up if they don't reply. So when I emailed, like I said, you have to email, like, a ton of different people at once. So it was hard for me to keep track of who I already called and who I didn't. So I would say, like, make a spreadsheet and with all the, like, names that you emailed and their emails and their phone numbers so that you don't call twice. Because definitely for me, I called or emailed the same people more than once, and that kind of deters them from giving you an opportunity. Um, So in your emails, what you have to do is first introduce yourself, so your name, school, and grade, then mention why you're interested in medicine and how you want, and like just mentioning that, oh yeah, I want medical experience. And next, ask about a potential research opportunity, and then mention why their specific clinic interests you because people are more likely to give you a response when they feel like oh yeah she's not emailing every single person even though really that's what you're doing she's she really is interested in my clinic and so the best way to do this is like look through their website find specific information about their specific clinic that you like and um mention that in the email and then at the end just say that even if they can't offer you an internship if you guys could still have a call so you can learn more about what they do um usually they will say yes because they just like helping people um and so this also shows that you genuinely genuinely are enjoy or like enjoy learning about what they do and aren't just doing it doing the internship just to do it and you would actually make the most out of it and so this also makes them more likely to give you the internship and then at the end just attach a resume um in your phone calls it's kind of the same thing but you don't say as much information just introduce yourself um and then mention why you're interested in medicine again and that you want medical experience and that you're you're calling them looking for an internship and then at the end just they'll usually like send it over to a different person or some or they'll give you an email to jot down but at the end if they don't give you this email just ask them if you can get an email that you can like send out more information to and send out like your resume but yeah that's basically like the gist of cold emailing Um, that's so good. That's great. Um, <laughs> so that's, um, all we have for today's meeting. So does anyone want to add anything? Um, okay. So, um, it was so great having medics on the mic here. Um, if you are, like I said in the beginning, um, if you're interested in learning about the research slash academic side of getting involved, um, please check out Medics on the Mic's podcast. Um, We were there as well. And um, I'm going to find some place to link that. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. And um, to our listeners, we'll see you next week.